Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Christine Regan Lake here. So today I want to talk to you about the covert narcissist. We're going to talk about five signs that you could be dealing with an with a covert narcissist. So I'll just give a brief rundown on what a narcissist is. So it absolutely, there is a definitive set of um, characteristics that someone must meet to actually be considered a narcissist. So there's, a, it's a spectrum, right? So someone can have like narcissistic tendencies or someone can be like hardcore all the way to the right, you know, fully narcissistic, meets all the traits and stuff like that. But I always do like to say whenever I discuss this stuff that you know, narcissists, just like the people they're interacting with, are human beings. And in their childhood, they were deeply wounded. So, you know, when it's always important to remember that when we label somebody, we really lose the ability to see them as an individual. So when I talk about a narcissist, I'm really talking about the traits. And I am not someone who goes along with the belief that, you know, narcissists can't change. I don't, I don't believe that in any sphere of my life, not when it comes to the physical body, not when it comes to the emotional body, things like that. Um, you know, if someone is committed to healing, I believe that there's nothing that can that they can't transcend, but it really must come from within. It has to be an internal drive. But let's get into the five characteristics if you're dealing with someone who is a covert narcissist. So a covert narcissist, unlike their counterpart, the overt narcissist, is tends to be more shy. This is someone who shies away from social interactions. Um, and really the driver behind that is because they're incredibly uncomfortable. They're very vulnerable and they have deep seated insecurity and feel like they're not good enough or worthy enough. And so the way they handle that is by just shying away from interactions with other people. And that's their form of protection and it's, you know, just how they operate. So they can be um, much harder to um, identify than someone who's an overt narcissist, really over the top, always talks about themselves, things like that. That's not a covert narcissist. A covert narcissist is much more, you know, it's much more downplayed. They're, you know, they're not boastful and things like that. It'll come out in different ways and we'll cover that in some of the other signs. So what's the second sign? The second sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is this is someone who is self-absorbed. It's all about me. And it's really interesting because several years ago I was, um, you know, I was in the process of gathering testimonials for one of the books that I wrote. And it was fascinating because one of the individuals that I got the testimonials back from literally managed to write a testimonial for me that was all about them. <laughs> It was, it was really interesting. And I was like, wow, I, I don't think I've ever seen a testimonial written like that before. Um, you know, it was really fascinating, but it was definitely an, an art. There was definitely an art to crafting a testimonial that was supposed to be at someone about someone else that was really all about themselves. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so that was kind of an enlightening moment for me. And, um, uh, you know, as I started delving into educating myself about what covert narcissists were, that that little um, memory popped up, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I think that's uh, that's kind of the um, the epitome or the definition of what self-absorbed would be, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so if you're dealing with someone who it's really all about them, all they care about them is themselves, all they want to do is talk about themselves, they're not really interested in you and what you have to say, you might be dealing with a covert narcissist. <laughs> okay, so what's the third one? The third one is sarcasm and backhanded compliments. So covert narcissists are experts at being able to really wrap a nasty little put down in like a, a blanket of humor to come off, you know, witty and humorous. Really, um, all they're trying to do is to put you down. They're trying to keep their place of superiority and, and kind of put you in your place and talk down to you. But they want to wrap it in humor. That way they can't be called on it so that if someone comes back and actually calls them on it, they can be like, oh, I was just kidding. You don't have a sense of humor or anything. Being mean to someone isn't funny. <laughs> Let's just say that loud and clear. Putting someone down and being mean and wrapping an insult in a blanket of witty humor humor isn't funny. It's manipulative, it's mean, and it's unkind. Okay, so what's the um, fourth uh, 
sign. The fourth sign would be passive aggressive. So I'm sorry, I'm just looking down at my notes because <laughs> I've got so much going on today. So the fourth sign is passive aggressive. So if you're dealing with a covert narcissist, they can be very, very passive aggressive. And the way, the reason they do this, again, it's because people are passive aggressive when they don't know how to deal with confrontation. They really don't like, um, you know, uh, having to engage other people, but being passive aggressive, it's a, it's like a, a low, um, it's like a low conflict way for them to push their aggressive nature, push their aggressions onto someone else. Because really when, when someone's doing that, when someone's being passive aggressive, what they're actually doing is they're taking their own inner anger and frustrations or whatever, and they're literally pushing it out and projecting it on other people so that they don't have to deal with it themselves. They're really like harnessing their energy and they're pushing it out on someone else so they can escape from those feelings of frustration and anger and whatever else, and then they'll just dump it all on you. That's really at the heart of what passive aggressiveness is. It's that person trying to offload the negative, nasty feelings that they have, um, frustrations about themselves, and push it on somebody else so they don't have to deal with it. Uh, it's completely toxic. It's totally uncomfortable. You know, it's totally um, you know out of integrity with you know your interpersonal relationships. And so, if you are dealing with someone who is passive aggressive like that, who projects their anger, rage, resentment, and frustrations on you, you might be dealing with a covert narcissist. <laughs> and what? our fifth sign. Our fifth sign is blaming and shaming. Covert narcissists love to blame and shame other people. The reason they do that, again, narcissism is all about someone who's intensely insecure, needing to hold this illusion for themselves that they are in a superior state than other people. They're smarter than other people. They're more beautiful than other people. They're more personable than other people. They're more successful than other people, whatever it is. However, um, they really embrace that identity of their narcissist of their narcissism, right? So by blaming and shaming other people, by putting those people down, that enables, it, it helps them maintain the illusion that they are in a superior state to other people. Another way that they do it is they will, um, they'll kind of like say something about themselves, like self-deprecating, you know, like, you know, cut themselves down or whatever and saying, you know, um, saying something about themselves so that the people around them will come back to them and be like, no, 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 that's not true. You're this, this, and this. So they can get that person to puff up their, you know, puff up their um, feeling about themselves, whatever. They really want to be fawned over and things like that. So they, they cut themselves down specifically for the reason to manipulate you to be, to puff, to puff them back up and to blow smoke up their butt. You know, that's just another way of that the narcissism, the narcissist, acts to try to draw into them the narcissistic supply that they need. And I'll go, I'll do a whole video on narcissistic supply and what that is. But basically they just really, they do that specifically as a hook to try to get people to fawn all over them and, you know, you know, blow smoke up their butt to, you know, inflate their ego and make them feel better about themselves. Um, and if you've ever been a part of that, um, you know, it's kind of ugly to watch, you know, <laughs> but it is what it is. Listen, we're all imperfect beings struggling to, you know, heal from the wounds of our past, the past and narcissists are, you know, not, they're just like everybody else, right? They've got wounds and really, those traits that they, you know, that I just shared with you, the five traits that, um, you know, signs that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist, the only reason they do them is because that's what they saw their parent, one or both or several of their people in their spheres of influence when they were growing up doing. So they learned those habits and behaviors. They're not bad people. Uh, they're just someone who those, those are the tools that are in their toolbox because they were the only tools that were presented to them. So, you know, while it can be frustrating to deal with narcissists, if you have the capacity to try to 
to, you know, look at their inner divinity and realize they're a wounded soul as well, just like you, um, and try to uh, reach a place of uh, forgiveness if you can. Um, you know, that that's a personal journey everybody's got to take on their own. Um, but I just wanted to share that thought with you. So I hope you have a beautiful day and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.